Okay, so a couple weeks ago we rescued some green spotted puffers from the local fish shop and today what we need to get done is we need to do some dental work on one that has some real bad teeth and they've been growing for a long time and not been looked after or clipped. The biggest concern though, and I have done this a few times in the past for customers, but with this guy there is three major concerns that I have. One, because of how underweight he is, he's not looking like he's in the best condition. It's going to be a stressful treatment for him. We need to sedate him with clove oil and we need to cross our fingers to hope that he comes back around from the clove oil and, and wakes up again pretty much. Second thing is when you put these guys to sleep is uh, there's a clear indication of once they've fallen asleep they tend to rock onto their sides and sometimes onto their back. Now because he's so underweight his belly is very flat across the bottom so I'm a little bit concerned he's not going to roll over so what one thing I have done to try and prevent that is I have just given him a really big meal and they're eating at the moment so it has rounded his belly as he has been eating even though he's got the large teeth going on at the moment. I've fed him a large meal so hopefully he will roll over onto the side. Now the third issue that I've got is because his teeth have been left for so long, usually it's easy enough to get the clippers or whatever it is you're using to cut his teeth behind the teeth, but they've grown so long there's not really much gap between his bottom lip or his mouth and the teeth themselves. So three little concerns, crossing my fingers that everything's going to be okay. I'm going to take you through what we're going to use today and how we're going to do it, how we're going to sedate the fish and how we're going to bring them back round and touch wood, hopefully everything goes okay. Let's get to it. So going through just what we got, so we've got two containers. Now one's gonna have the fish in with the clove oil, uh, and then we're also gonna have a second container, which is just gonna be nothing but tank water. Uh, that's going to be to bring them back round. Obviously a net just to hook the fish out. Now I'd usually use nail clippers, but like I say, no, because of the way that his teeth are, because the, there's like no gap or any space behind his teeth, I'm actually going to use cuticle clippers just because of the points on there. So it may be a little bit easier just to get in behind. Obviously some clove oil, that's pure organic clove oil and then some gloves obviously the puffers they don't have scales so you want to always wear gloves just so you don't get any sort of oils transfer any any oils transfer from your skin onto the fish and obviously you don't damage or any sort of scent fragrances you got so yeah gloves clove oil clippers net two containers one to have the fish in with the clove oil and another one which we're going to put him in after with nothing but tank water in to hopefully bring him back around so we'll get him in and i'll take you through it so little guys in here now um so just to take note the general ratio of clove oil to tank water so for every cup every cup full you want to do one drop of clove oil so that's an american cup to one drop of clove oil so we start getting it in hopefully it start to look a little bit sleepy roll over and we can start to get his teeth done okay so hopefully you guys can see this pretty much did rock onto his side which was good get the nail clippers right up under his teeth So they're so long. Yeah, see, it's just a concern now. I can't even get the clippers behind them. One. clip him right down so nice and easy we're getting back in the water now and let him come back round so yeah sorry talking wasn't great was demonstrating because I was just concentrating concentrating on what I was doing but he's he's in the container now with just salt water he's breathing still he's still breathing absolutely fine you know it's a scary thing is you know clove oil there's a difference between sedating and what you the amount you put into fully euthanize a fish but he's in there now I let him come back round you know, it was more difficult than I expected just purely because of the length of the teeth. I couldn't get the clippers behind it properly. But yeah, obviously it's going to be stressful for him. We'll give him five, ten minutes, let him come back round. He's breathing stronger already. Good sign. He's got a new set of teeth. Oh, I'm a happy fish. I'm a happy fish with my new front teeth. New front teeth. I'm a happy fish. I'm a happy fish with my new front teeth. New front teeth. Guys, buzzing. So he's just been to Turkey, looking a little bit surprised with his mouth open, but one happy chappy with a new set of teeth. Go on, boy.
So he's back in with his buddies now and he done absolutely brilliant. So the concerns that I had, he absolutely sailed through them and it was a nice quick process. Little bit of problem, but again, because of the length of his teeth, this clip has just kept sliding down his teeth because they were so pointy and so long, but we managed to get there in the end. But no, like I said, we touched wood and everything went absolutely fine. So just to go back through, I can only apologize. I didn't film him going under because I just had to worry and I was just concerned about keeping an eye on him, keeping an eye on his breathing and just concentrating on one he went under because I didn't want him to be in the clove oil for too long or any more longer than he had to be but he absolutely breathed for it so just to go back on what we used and what we needed was we had two containers one with obviously just plain tank water in for him to come round in after the clove oil treatment the second container with tank water in plus the clove oil the sort of dosage that I've used and always use personally is for every one cup sort of teacup of water one drop of clove oil it took him about a minute and he started to go under like I said he started to roll onto his side to give a clear indication at about a minute that he was sedated. Went to pick him up, he was still reacting a little bit and then at about two minutes he was completely under for me to be able to pick him up. So obviously got him out, we've done the treatment as quickly as possible. Again, apologies, I didn't film, I just had to be concerned, I just had to concentrate on how he was getting on and keeping an eye on his breathing. But no, he absolutely breathed through it, obviously swimming around a little bit surprised now because with his mouth open because his teeth have obviously kept his jaw open for god knows how long considering how long his teeth were but he's back in with his buddies and he's absolutely buzzing he's actually swimming around now more excited than he usually was and sometimes you like to think they're grateful thankful for what you've done but yeah like i said he's happy So now it's just all about keeping his teeth or all of their teeth fold and shortened. And it's just gonna be things like feeding shelled foods, snails, stuff like that that they can grind their teeth down on. If you're doing a lot of soft foods or frozen foods, there's just not gonna be enough there to keep them teeth fold down. Now, now the problem that we've got here in the UK is we can't get anything over the counter unless it's administered by a vet that will sedate a fish safely. So we have to use clove oil. Now, continuously using clove oil to sedate a fish has started to show that it has long-term effects, brain damage, and eventually the fish not coming back around from being sedated. So it's very important that we need to keep the fatigue fold now. Guys, if you're into puffers, like I said, hit the subscribe button because these guys are here to stay and I'll keep you updated. If you enjoyed the video, again, hit that subscribe button. Hope it's given you a good tutorial of how to get it done. Stay calm, stay relaxed, and they'll be happy. I'll see you next time.